a STEM ambassador and an apprentice and I'm going to be talking a little bit about my experience with chemistry apprenticeship. So we'll dive straight in and um, start when I was with in school. I went to a grammar school in High Wycombe and um, my school had a very, very heavy emphasis on university. It was just expected that you would do your GCSEs, do your A-levels and then go on to university and follow this very straight line here. And I had no idea that there were actually all sorts of routes you could take to go to the same place. So I, there was lots and lots of pressure on me to go to university and in this environment I started off thinking that that was what I wanted to do because that's what everyone did. However, as I went through school, I started to realise that I didn't like to be sat down while someone taught to me. And my favourite bits of school were the science practicals where I got to wear a white coat and do experiments and find things out for myself. And so that's when I started to question whether apprenticeship sorry, university was for me. And so for a change of scene after my GCSEs, I went to college for my A-levels, where I did chemistry, biology and maths. College was a little bit more relaxed. We got to wear our own clothes and call our teachers by their first name. And they were a little bit more relaxed university as well. But it was still kind of expected that the high achievers would go on and apply to uni. I ended up getting three A stars and I think I shocked a few of my teachers. They just couldn't believe that I hadn't even applied. There are a few reasons why I didn't apply. One was because A-levels are hard. I found them really, really difficult and I didn't want to be writing a personal statement and going to interviews alongside that. That was too much for me. And also I didn't really know what I wanted to do. I enjoyed science, I was good at chemistry, but I didn't know anything about the jobs in, in that field except for scientists. Um, so I ended up finishing my exams without a plan. I didn't have any job lined up or any university and I went to the careers advisor at college and she was the first one who uh, suggested apprenticeships for me. At this point, I knew what an apprenticeship was because my college offered them, but these were in things like hairdressing and plumbing. And I had no idea that you could become a scientist through an apprenticeship. So what is an apprenticeship? Well, primarily it is a job. You can do an apprenticeship in almost any career. And when I first started doing these talks a few years ago, I used to say you can be anything but a lawyer or a doctor, but that's changed these days. I know solicitors who um, got a degree in law through an apprenticeship. And while you can't become a doctor, there are nursing degree apprenticeships and others kind of in the medicine field. You can even become a skydiving instructor through an apprenticeship. Uh, like most jobs, you get paid and some apprenticeships, like the one I'm on, you get a guaranteed pay rise for every year that you complete of your apprenticeship. I have a statistic here that apprentices earn on average £1.5 million more over the course of their career than university graduates because they have that uh, head start into industry and can start getting promotions quicker and pay rises quicker. Of that paid time, 20% of that is spent on training. And in my experience, that's been one day out of your five day working week. Although I know, I know some courses you can spend a few months at work and then a month or two training. This is usually offered by a college or university. And unlike when you apply for university, you don't have to do a personal statement or anything. You apply for the job and then your position just kind of comes with the job. It's also fully paid by the employer, so you don't end up in debt like you would when going through your traditional education through university. The training consists of two parts. So there's a competence side, which makes sure 
after your apprenticeship, you can actually do your job. And a knowledge side, which is usually a qualification like a BTEC or a degree. You might have heard of different levels of apprenticeships and I have this little table here just to explain. Uh, they usually have a name and a number and they're equivalent to your kind of traditional education route. And as such, you can you can jump in at any point. You could start an advanced apprenticeship after doing your GCSEs or you could do a degree apprenticeship after your A-levels or after an advanced or higher apprenticeship. And so following on from college, I started looking for apprenticeships in science and I got this level three position at a company called Green Biologics. Green Biologics were a biotechnology company. They made solvents called acetone, butanol and ethanol. These are really, really useful solvents. They're used in labs all over and they're also common in your household in things like nail varnish remover, plastics, paints, varnishes and things like that. The problem is, although they're so useful, they usually come from fossil fuels and we all know the problem with that. It's a finite resource and it causes massive problems to the environment to get to it. So Green Biologics developed this process where they'd use bacteria to make the solvents for them and they'd feed the bacteria the sugars from corn. Uh, and this is a process called fermentation. And my job as an analytical chemist was I'd take samples from the fermenters and tell them how much solvent they've made, how much sugar um, has been consumed. And that would give them the results of their experiments, whether their genetic modification had worked to try and make more product. So I'd use instruments like this one here. This is called an HPLC or high performance liquid chromatography. And um, this is you, quite rare to see in university labs. And if you do, you'd get one that you have to manually inject each sample and it would take all day. Whereas this one here, it uh, has an auto sampler that will automatically move its needle and inject each sample. So I'd run the samples through that and analyze the results to get um, a number of how much solvent they've made exactly. I'd also spend my day uh, maintaining these instruments because they're quite specialist and finicky and they need daily and weekly maintenance. And sometimes the biologists would request something else they want to look for, like a new sugar. And I'd have to figure out how to change how these instruments work to analyze that new particular sugar. So that was my day to day job. While I was there, I also had opportunities um, such as training courses, which were funded by the Royal Society of Chemistry, as well as my company, Green Biologics, and these helped to make me an expert in these HPLCs. I also liked the apprenticeship so much that I became an apprenticeship ambassador and started doing talks like these uh, to schools to try and spread the word. And through this, in National Apprenticeship Week 2017, I was actually invited to the House of Commons where they had a little event for apprenticeship ambassadors there. But overall, this was a two year position and I found it a really great taste of the industry. I um, got experience as an analytical chemist, but I also built up my network of scientists and through that I identified that what I really wanted to do was become an organic synthetic chemist. So that's what I did four days out of the five and on a Tuesday I'd spend on my training. So I said before that this is usually done by a college, but mine was a little bit different where this company called CSR Group would travel all over the company to their apprentices. And so I studied with about three or four other apprentices on the business park where I worked and we'd gather and have a lesson. For our competence, we did what we called a LATA, which is this NVQ diploma. And that was basically a whole list of criteria, things like I can work safely in the lab, I can communicate well. And for each one of those, I had to provide evidence from my day to day working that I could do that. My knowledge side of things was a BTEC in applied science. 
and that was coursework based so I do things like reports presentations and occasionally we'd have a practical like this one here this was a fictitious crime scene where we had to match um, the blood group from blood samples of some suspects and try and match it to the crime scene we take turns hosting each other for these practicals in our different labs so I got to see all sorts of other labs as well as my little analytical chemistry one. For most apprenticeships you need level two English, maths and ICT in order to pass and you'd normally get this at GCSE but I didn't do a GCSE in ICT and so my company also paid for me to do a level two ICT fundamental skills qualification. Other opportunities through this might um, CSR group they took us on a training oh, sorry a field trip to an anatomy suite at a university and this is where medicine students learn about anatomy by dissecting cadavers so that was a really really cool day it was a little bit stomach churning um, but it was a really great experience and after my two years after I got my qualifications and my apprenticeship we had a little graduation ceremony with the Royal Society of Chemistry. So we had a little service in London and I got the opportunity to speak there to the fellow apprentices. Excuse me. So following that apprenticeship, I decided that if I were to do any more qualifications, it would be through an apprenticeship. I just really loved the combination of learning on the job and um, studying part time and not being stuck um, behind a chair or behind a desk in a classroom. And so after that, I started looking for level six apprenticeships for me to progress my career. And that's how I got this position at Pfizer. Pfizer is a pharmaceutical company and I work in a department called Chemical Research and Development. And once a drug is found that works in the body against a disease or an illness. It's my department's job to figure out the best way to make the active pharmaceutical ingredients. So that's the part of the drug that has an effect on the body. These are usually brand new molecules. They're not found in nature. And so we have to figure out how to make them through a series of chemical reactions. Um, it's usually several steps like this graphic here. So this would be four different reactions in order to make the API. And each of those reactions need to be optimized in order to make as much product as possible, as cheaply as possible. It needs to be safe and things like that. And each of those reactions have so many variables that need to be tested to try and optimize them. Things like the solvent, the temperature the reactions run at, whether there's any additives like base, acid, catalyst, and all the different types of catalysts that there are. So screening all of those different combinations, there'd be thousands and it would take years to get through them all. So my job in high throughput screening is to use robots to get through as many of those as possible. Uh, I usually run 96 reactions at a time on a 300 microliter scale. So each reaction is 0.3 of a milliliter. So we don't use very much material. And within a day or two, we'd have screened 96 conditions, whereas the chemists that I work with in the other labs, they'd maybe do one or two 500 milliliter reactions over a day or two. So we're getting um, kind of 100 times the data than they would. I've got a few of my ro favorite robots here on the screen. So this um, Qantas Connect is a weighing robot. It's got its vials on the right ones, on the, this right side. Um, so we'd usually have one mil vials and it uses this robotic arm to pick up a vial and place it in the balance. Got this rack of solids behind it so it can pick those up as well and weigh into the vial. So this robot can go overnight, over the weekend. I've actually got it on now, weighing out a plate of starting materials and bases into 96 vials. So hopefully once I'm done talking to you, I can go and put my reaction on. I just have to add the solvents and off it goes. 
Another robot here is um, the big kahuna. This is a real big one. It's about two meters across. Um, this is a really customizable robot from Unchained Labs. And this one in the picture here is designed for weighing as well. So it has vials and racks in these positions here. It's got the solids here and the balance here. It uses this arm to pick up the solids that you want to weigh and this arm to pick up the vials. So that one can weigh as well. But the one I've got in the lab also has needles on this arm here and it uses these syringes to add the liquids to your reactions as well. And this white block here, that one can heat, cool and stir the reactions. So now you've got a whole kind of few day reaction that can be carried out by this robot. It can add your solids, it can add your liquids, it can stir and heat and then it can sample your reactions and then I can run those on the HPLC like I did in my old job and find out how much product I've made. These are really cool bits of kit. They're quite rare and they're really expensive. I think our lab's worth millions and millions of dollars at the minute with all the kit in it. Um, so I'm really lucky to be working with, with these. It's not something every university student does in the slightest. What's good about Pfizer is there's lots of apprentices and we have a whole network on site. There's about 50 apprentices and they cover everything from science to engineering to office roles like admin. We're all about the same age and so um, once upon a time we used to do social things together, go out. So I don't feel like I'm missing that side of university and the plus is that we have money as well from our jobs. Pfizer sent me on an Outward Bound course that was part of my training and um, you may have heard of it. It is a course that companies like to send their early career colleagues on. And for this one, we went to the Lake District and we were climbing mountains. We were building rafts and learning things like leadership and teamwork while we were there. Pfizer also has a big emphasis on STEM that they like their apprentices to get involved. In so we can go to schools and do experiments, which is lots of fun. Um, a colleague of mine has two daughters in a local primary school and once a year we'll go in, blow things up for the kids and it's lots of fun uh, seeing the reactions of primary school kids to, to making a blue flame or something. It's really, really excellent. So again, that's what I spend four of days a week doing and one day a week I spend on my training. Um, this time it's with the University of Greenwich. So they offer a specialist course for chemistry apprentices. My competence is a skills log. That's very similar to the competence I did in my level three apprenticeship where I have to gather evidence for some competencies to prove that I can do them. But this time I also have an endpoint assessment. So after my five years are up, someone will come in and observe me on site, observe me doing my job and make sure that I am competent. My knowledge is a bachelor's degree in chemistry and once a week I go to the university and have lectures with the full time students who are doing their traditional degree. Uh, this takes five years instead of the three because it's part time. It's only one day a week. And that's assessed through exams, coursework and practicals. That's a little bit different to how the full time students do it as well. They tend to have labs once a week, whereas the part time students will have one week, usually in March, where we try and cram in as much as possible. So we stay on campus and do our, all our practicals then. Although it is a little bit of a breeze because we're in the lab all year round anyway, every day. Um, so that's quite easy. The day changes every year. This time I'm on a Tuesday, which is OK. I've got into a little bit of a, a routine doing all my lab write ups on a Monday and in the lab Wednesday through Friday. Um, it can be quite difficult in my first year. It was a Wednesday, so I didn't have more than two days in the lab at a time. They can be long days as well. Uh, last year it was nine to five lectures with an hour's lunch in the middle. It's, it's a lot of thinking to do. 
So if I have piqued your interest, I've just included a little bit of information on how to apply for an apprenticeship. Um, there is this government website, find an apprenticeship, or you can just search find an apprenticeship. And most apprenticeships should be on here. But a little tip is some companies advertise on their website before putting it on the government website. So if you have a particular company in mind, it's a good idea to check their site first. Apprenticeships can start throughout the year, though it's quite common for them to start in September. They don't always. That means they can advertise throughout the year. So I think this, um, this website has an option for you to get alerts, whether um, one that would interest you. They'll just email you whether that, when that's ready to apply for. Usually there's an application form that you fill out through the website and then you might be invited for an interview. In my experience, the interviewers have been really aware that this might be your first ever or one of your first interviews, so they're really, really kind. My first interview with Green Biologics was with a tutor from CSR Group and my manager from Green Biologics. And then I got a tour um, from one of the apprentices there, so I got to ask lots of questions. However, my one with Pfizer, it was a full on day. I had um, a chemistry knowledge section where I had to answer questions on chemistry. I had a traditional interview, I had a tour and it took all day. Um, so that was quite intense, but it was good experience as well. And they were still kind and considerate that I might not have done an apprenticeship before. So just a few uh, final comments. As I said, um, an apprenticeship can be a really great taste of industry if you're not too sure what you'd like to do. Sometimes they're one or two years, you get a qualification out of it, you get experience actually trying the job and seeing whether you like it and also meeting people with similar jobs. You can do an apprenticeship before university and I know people who have done a level three apprenticeship, a level four apprenticeship and then gone on to do university full time. It is work experience and it's unmatched work experience. Um, doing labs in schools and at uni, is, it's good to go on your CV. Even doing a placement is OK, but um, after my five years, I will have seven years experience as well as a degree and graduating at the same time of people who may only have a degree. So in my opinion, you know, who's an employer going to pick someone who's actually done the job? It is a lot of hard work. You are working full time. You have to do your uni work at the weekend. I quite often stay late in the office and make use of the quiet after five um, to do my coursework because it during term time it can get intense during exams things like that. And finally, if you are applying to university in order to do a particular job after, I um, why would you spend those three or four years studying when you can just go straight into that job? More than likely there is an apprenticeship in that job. You can go straight into the lab if that's what you like and you don't have to waste time in, in a university doing your degree to get there. So that's that's all I had to say at the minute. I think um, the lovely team at STEM Learning have been collecting some questions which I'll be happy to screen. Thank you very much, um, Emily, for your talk. And really interesting to hear about um, your approach to from going to the school to doing the different types of apprenticeships and actually moving <laughs> up the ladder a few different levels. Um, first uh, question we've got actually is I wanted to know when you started to apply for apprenticeships, when were you at college? Um, it's the first part. Oh, sorry, could you repeat that? Oh, sorry. I wanted to know when you started to apply for apprenticeships, when when you were at college, she's put as a question mark. So was you applying for apprenticeships mm -hmm. when you was at college or at what stage? Um, yeah, I think it was right after my exams. So I had finished lessons efficiently, but I I was still in contact with the careers advisor there and she was helping me to apply. And the other part to this question, and the person hasn't put their age, but if I were to be looking for apprenticeships now, would it be too late? 
Um, I don't think it's too late. Um, you can join at, at kind of any stage up to um, if you already have a chemistry degree, I don't think a company will fund you to do a chemistry degree, but um, any age and we have we have apprentices in their in their 50s um, who have wanted a change of career. So it's for any age, it's never too late. Yeah. Uh, we've got a question here. How do you seek out an apprenticeship in a field you like? Uh, so yeah, um, that government website, it has, uh, you can search by keyword or there's also different categories on there. So things like science or hospitality. Um, otherwise, just maybe looking at the websites of companies in the field that you like and seeing what kind of things they offer. Perfect, thank you. And what experience did you have to talk about or put on your CV before your first apprenticeship? Hey, that's a good question. So I suppose while I was at school, I had a part time job just as a receptionist. So although that's not to do with chemistry, I was able to draw from that with things like organisational skills and and teamwork. And then I just uh, wrote about my A levels, my GCSEs, what I enjoyed through that. Um, um, I don't know if it's the same now when I did my A-levels, there was a practical part of that that was assessed. So I talked about those practicals, what I did, what I got from it. Perfect, thank you. When you first started the chemistry apprenticeship, Emily, did you find it hard at first? Was it difficult? Um, no, I don't think so. Um, as what I like about um, working in a lab is you don't necessarily need to know the science behind things at first. You're just carrying out, following a procedure, doing things in the lab. It does help if you know the science behind it. But um, yeah, you can carry those out so it's not too hard. And then you're learning all the time. And I found um, most people in my workplaces at both jobs, they're really eager to help the early career people, whether they're new graduates or apprentices. Um, so they're really eager to help. So yeah, it's, it is quite easy. That's good well, to know. Easy. Well, not easy, but, <laughs> but, but not hard. Ev but with everything, if people work hard, they study hard, remain dedicated, you can do your best. And I would imagine that's a really good start to an apprenticeship. Yep, yeah, absolutely. Uh, we have another question. Um, have you been involved in any of the COVID vaccination testing? Um, unfortunately not. It's my colleagues in America who have been um, developing that vaccination. Uh, there are some teams on my site who've been working on an antiviral drug, but um, that's not to do with me. I've We've just been open working on other medicines so that patients can and get those medicines. I've been working on one for fatty liver disease and another for alopecia. Wow, thank you. Looking back from A levels onwards, is there anything you do differently or change? I don't think so. Um, I have thought I did kind of double up on A levels because I did my A levels and then level three apprenticeship. Um, so they're equivalent and there was a lot of my A-level, uh, the material in the BTEC. So perhaps I could have gone straight for the degree apprenticeship. However, I think uh, the experience I gained from that apprenticeship was really valuable. It helped me get my second one and it was, yeah, it, was, it helped me realise what I wanted to do. So no, I don't think so. Got another question. What's a really good, a good one actually. What support is available whilst on an apprenticeship? Yep, so that that is a good one. Um, so my managers have always been really, really great helping with the work. You also get a personal tutor either at the college or university. Um, so there's people everywhere. There's um, HR who can help at work and things like that. Perfect. Thank you. We'll just do this last question because of time and it's how competitive are level six apprenticeships in companies such as Pfizer? I think they are they are fairly competitive. I think on my 
interview day there were six of us interviewing um we advertised for one last year and we had i want to say a couple of hundred applicants for the one position so they are fairly competitive um but just keep applying i can't tell you how many that i applied to while looking for this one um i ended up with a whole host of of interviews and it's quite nice having to cancel interviews once you've got the position that you wanted Perfect. So um, we'll wrap that up there. Thank you so much for joining us. Today. We've had lots of questions in. Um, it's been really useful for everybody.